Hi class, now let us continue our course with chapter 5, Array and Aggregates. And this is another one of my slide that I created while working from home during Malaysia's Movement Control Order 2020. Just to prove that I did work from home and didn't just sleep and eat. At the end of this chapter, you are expected to know the concept of what we call array and aggregates. This includes structure and union. You need to know a little bit detail about structure, but union is only for your knowledge. And also, at the end of this chapter, we will introduce you to size of operator. This is a way we determine the size of certain variable or array or structure. And right after we cover array, we will introduce you command line argument, which will be tested in your CBT2, computer-based test 2. Chapter content. First, we will cover array. Then, knowing array, you are ready to do command line argument programming. But most of the exercise is already in a separate set of videos. You have to watch those videos in order to pass your CBT2. Then, after that, we will cover structure and union. Then, size of operator. We start with array. In programming language, array is a group of values with similar data type. In our scope, similar here means exactly the same data type. That will be accessed using a single variable name. So instead of we have a few variable, but we don't want to give name to this variable and they are related to each other the same type, so we want to keep them as array, by which we can access them only with a single name. However, when we do calculation, we will need to address them or access them individually. So to do that, we need index. So as I said just now, in standard C and C++, or at least in our scope, Array can only keep identical or exactly the same data type. In C++, maybe with inheritance, you can keep array as the base data type. So, as you know, you have been declaring variables so far, like integer or double or string. So, array as we seen just now is another kind of variable, so we need to declare them. So, how to declare it? When we say how, actually we mean what is the syntax. This is the syntax. First, in the syntax, we put the data type of the element, then the variable name. This variable name follows the same rule that we have for other regular variable. And now the special thing or new thing here is the variable name will be followed by a pair of square bracket and inside of it we have the size of the array or the number of elements that we want to put in the array. Sometimes we call the number of members, sometimes we call the number of elements. So data type and variable name just now as we said will follow whatever you have learned before. Data type is either integer or double or float and variable name will follow the variable name rules that you already know. Now the variable name is followed by a size in square bracket. This size will determine how many elements are there in the array. 
So, for example, you want to declare an array of five elements, and the elements are integer, and the name of the array will be this one, my array, which means all elements in the array will be addressed as my array, but if we want to address it individually, we have to put the index. So in this case, my array is an array of integer, how many elements? Five elements. That is how we declare an array. After declaration, sometimes we want to initialize a known value to the array. So, just like other variables, we can do the same to the array too. If the array is to be initialized at declaration, the size should not be given. This means the size that we put in the square bracket should be left blank. So, there is a similar syntax, but now with a blank square bracket. It is followed by assignment operator or equal operator and between a pair of curly bracket, we put the values that we want to initialize to the array. So the square bracket now is empty. In most cases, it's better to keep it empty as we said here, but perhaps in later standard of C++, you are allowed to give value to size even though you have initializers but to keep your program behave predictably my suggestion is to keep the square bracket here empty when you have initializers so now we put the initializers inside a pair of curly bracket separated by comma for example let's say we want to declare the same array of integer now we don't give the size anymore or we don't give the number of element in the array anymore because the number of element can be deduced by the number of initialization that we have here we have one two three four five so implicitly the value of five is actually inside this square bracket so with initialization like this the number of elements in, in array is the number of initialization that we give. So next is how to access the value in the array. We are able to declare already. We are able to give initial values. So how do we access them? To access individual elements in an array, we do it by giving the index inside a square bracket. In C, C++, the index starts at 0 for the first element and it increases one by one until the largest index is for the last element, which is size minus 1. If, let's say just now we have an array of 5 elements or the size is 5, so the index of the last element, the fifth element, is 5 minus 1, which is 4. So, an example of accessing the array element, this one is we are reading from the array. This is array. We are getting the value from array and we keep in another variable. So, this is we are reading. So, how do we do it? We give the array name and then followed by the bracket and inside the bracket is the index of the element or the member that we want to access or we can give value to individual array how do we do it the value that we want to give we assign using equal operator as usual and then we tell to which element in the array that we want to assign to by giving its index between the square bracket so this is how we write to array. Next is an example of array application. We will do this more as hands-on in lab. 
in separate video. If you still recall, we have done a hands-on exercise on day of year. And if you still recall, we did it using switch case control flow, where we check for the months one by one and we compare manually to the number of days that the months have. An alternative way to write the program is by using an array to keep the number of days of months. So let's say we have that array here, day of month, an array of integer. So we initialize the array with the number of days in months. The first month, index 0, is January, number of days is 31. And then 28 for February, index 1 for non leap year. March is 31, April, May, and so on until December. So instead of using switch case like before, now we can use for loop because we can visit each of the element in this array in a for loop. We have the for loop start with 1 because it's better to start with month 1 instead of month 0. We start with month 1 as long as the month is less than the month that we are totaling up the days. And the loop parameter here, C, is used as the index to the array. So you can see here, we accumulate the number of days from the array one by one into another variable that keep the total number of days until the month before the month that we are looking for. And you see here, the index is not exactly C, but C minus 1 because we start the index with 1, but the starting index actually start with 0 in the array. So we have to minus 1 so that we can start the index with 0. And this part is to add the extra day if the year is a leap year. I'm not going through this code in very detail, just to show you that we can reduce the code that we use switch case before into a smaller code just by using for loop if we use array in our calculation. We will do a different exercise with array in separate video.